Good morning, everyone. It's a beautiful Sunday. And I really love the idea of, I really love our series, See You on Sunday. The only thing I'm saddened is that it's just a two-week series. We hope that we could extend this. Are you okay with extending this? Okay, thank you for those 15 people, at least 15 people who's excited for this series. But um, I missed everyone. Last Sunday, I wasn't here. We were, me and Audi, we were in Malay Balay. Uh, to preach in their eighth church anniversary. It's really a growing, thriving church. Um, 50% or more than 50% are actually students. And you could just really see the, the energy, the passion, the vibrancy. And, but wala lang, their energy is nothing compared to your energy. Diba? All right. Can you all please pretend that you're still young and energetic? Yay. All right. Great, great. But anyway, um, some quick things before we get into the Word. Um, next Saturday, December 2, uh, we'll be having our church community class. If you want to know more and understand who we are as a church, we'd like to invite you to join and register in our church community class. Na- that will be at 9 a.m. Next, sun- uh, next Saturday. And then December 16. Everyone say December 16. If you like waking up early... <laughs> but uh, December 16, we'll be having our Sambang Gabi, okay? Uh, it's a yearly thing that we do. We'll be gathering together and we'll be uh, worshiping and singing Christmas carols together at 5 a.m. Uh, we hope that you would take the time to wake up. Or wag na lang matulog for some of you. But please be here December 16 at 5 a.m. for our Sambang Gabi. This is something that we always look forward to. We'll be sharing kakanin. And please bring food to share for everyone. Um, normally, there's like 200 of us who gathers every December. But every December for our Sambang Gabi. So we'd like to encourage you to join us. And then a very important announcement. December 24 and 31... Uh, that's uh, our Noche Buena and Media, Media Noche, which falls on a Sunday. And one of the core values of victory is family. What that means is we don't want to rob you of the opportunity to help prepare, if ever you prepare with your families. But on the 24th, we will only be having morning services. So instead of 10 a.m. and 3 p.m., we will be having 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. Just for those two Sundays, December 24 and December 31. And then pagkatapos po nun, guess what? Prayer and fasting na tayo. <laughs> After a month of feasting, we're gonna fast! <laughs> Grabe Victory Lava, I love your energy. <laughs> but again, uh, that's just for two Sundays. December 24 and December 31. The reason we're moving it in, uh, in just in the morning so that in the afternoon you could prepare with your families. We want you to really enjoy the celebration with your families. And I just want to say this. Um, if you don't have families to, to celebrate Christmas with, just to encourage you, you are not forever alone. Okay? Mal ni Jesus. And we can still celebrate Christmas. Again, there are, some of, there are some church members here that they actually invite others as well to celebrate with them. So we hope that you'd be excited for that. And just one quick update before we get into the Word of God. Um, we had a meeting with the city engineer's office. This is in, regarding, in regards to the building project. Uh, there are some progress with the conversation. So please do continue p- to pray with us as we continue to believe that, they, that we will be given the permit. Uh, so far in our conversation, they actually gave us a go signal. Yay! And praise God for that. But there will be some other things that we will just really, we need to work out. And hopefully, by the grace of God, God willing, early next year we'll be able to start. Uh, this has really been... We know that you're frustrated and you're still waiting for it. And for some of you, uh, you're, you've really been praying. But please do continue to pray with us. This is something that we have really been praying and believing God for by faith. And so hopefully by first quarter of next year, we'll really be able to start. And please do continue to also pray for our government. Can we do that? They need our prayers and just in the same way that um, it's a partnership. One of the reasons why we want to be a blessing to them and we don't want to take shortcuts is because that's really part of really nation building. We want to do things in a way that honors God. Amen? Let's all stand up as we conclude our series on See You on Sunday. 
and um, we'll be we'll be reading from a book that talks about God loving coffee. Did you know that God loves coffee? Because Hebrews. Yeah. Okay. Sige. Iba talaga yung energy niya today. Life changing. <laughs> but anyway, open your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 10. We'll be reading verses 19 to 25. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 19 to 25. This is the word of God. Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the holy places by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain that is through his flesh. And, so, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith and with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. This is the word of God. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, this is your church. We are your people. You have bought us with a price. And so, Lord, may we respond in such a manner that even as you have, as you have given your life for each one of us, may we respond in obedience and complete surrender. Holy Spirit, I ask and I pray that you would speak to each one of us, that you would fill our hearts with gladness because we get to gather today as your people, that we get to hear and worship you together as a church. So I pray that you would give us understanding, that you would give us clarity of what it means to be your church, and that we would be a people who would love you, who would worship you, who would glorify you, in every aspect of our lives, whether in our relationships, or in our finances, in our marriages. Lord, today, we choose to die to ourselves. And Lord, we want to live for your glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated, everyone. For some of us here, when we think of Sunday, we think of rest day. We think of going on vacations. We think, we think of family days. Now, growing up as a pastor's kid, where do you think would you find us? In church. In fact, growing up um, as a pastor's kid, there were certain things that maybe it was not common for an ordinary kid. Every Saturday, we would make sure that we would apply floor wax. Can you still remember what floor wax is? And we would apply floor wax in the stairs, in the floor, and we would scrub it. Do you know what scrub is? Yung book ng ibang tao parang scrub, okay? But it was very common for us. And we would arrange the chairs, and we would also prepare the communion elements, and then we would go on our choir practice. I remember the very first song that we sang as a choir, which was Blessed Assurance. It was a very beautiful song. Now, when I became a teenager, things became more challenging just because if you're a teenager, you feel like church is not for me. <laughs> it's for old people. But I thank the Lord that my parents were so determined to really bring us to church. And every Sunday, what my dad would do is that while I'm still sleeping at 6.30 in the morning, on a Sunday morning, my dad would enter my room and then he would say these very words, wake up, wake up. Today is Sunday. Today is the Lord's Day. So let's go to church together and worship the Lord. That is every single Sunday. And even if I'm not, Dad, okay, Dad, he would uh, hold my feet and he would massage my feet to the point that wala ka mag, wala ka mag, wala ka You know why? Because my kiliti is in my feet. And then I would wake up and I would drag myself going to church every Sunday morning. But then there was this one Sunday that while just listening to my dad preach, I just had an encounter with the Lord. And I started to just really say, Lord, thank you for giving me parents who are so determined that I would grow in such a way who would love you and I would get my identity and my security in you alone. You see, 
I thank the Lord for my parents' vision to raise a godly generation. And this vision to raise a godly generation influenced their actions. That's why we would have family devotions. That's why we would have this non-negotiable, that we would go to church together, that we would have late-night talks, and they would simply ask, Jopet, how's your day? And kahit gabi-gabi po yan, I was just so excited to actually share what's in my heart. Hindi ba lata, I talk a lot. Because I thank the Lord that my parents allowed me to express what's happening in my heart. My first rejection, my parents were there to listen to me. And I know in their minds, they were probably saying, Da tagam. <laughs> but they were just patiently, mm, you know, drop it, that's really part of life. And you know, even if someone would reject you, you're loved and accepted by God. And we would have family, dinner, time, we're in Butilan during the time there were no phones yet. But we would have these moments together wherein we would just do things together. My parents were determined that we would grow loving God and His church. You see, there are different reasons why people don't want to, to go to church. There are general reasons where, where, like, for example, it's raining outside. And we would even use verses, Pastor, di ba we're salt and light of the earth? If mababasa ng ulan, guess what? Mapapat, mapapatay ang light and matutunaw yung pagiging salt natin. And there are just very different reasons. Sometimes we would use it as a reason that that's the only day for errands. And maybe for some of us, we're, we're, we would say, but pastor, I'm busy in our Christmas party dance practice. <laughs> and for the past few years, there was really a legit reason, which was actually covid and these are general reasons, but maybe for some of us, we have our personal reasons. You would say the pastor is boring, or maybe you just want to extend sleep until the whole day. You just want to sleep the whole day. For some of us, we would simply say that people in church are hypocrites, or you've been hurt, and you have been betrayed by someone in church. Or for, for, for most of us, we could simply say that the church is not just our priority. Or maybe, for some of us, aminado tayo that we are just lazy and we don't want the discomfort. And for some of us, we would simply say, but pastor, it's more convenient. Church is now available online. Can't we just enjoy online church? Now, whatever our reason is, it can actually be a valid reason. Now, the author or the writer of the book of Hebrews, though it wasn't stated who actually wrote it, some would say that it's the Apostle Paul, but it wasn't stated. Now, he was writing to a church that was actually persecuted. And because there was persecution, somehow there was isolation. Because they were separated from the community. There was no fellowship. So there was a time that they could just go out because of fear that somehow they could actually die. Did you know that being a Christ follower during their time is as if you're bringing, you're living a life with death sentence? It's like wherever you go, there's electric chair. Now, I checked last night and I realized that there are, still, there are still nations right now that they have death penalty. For example, there's one country today that they still have, uh, what do you call this? Beheading. They're still beheading. There are still nations today wherein hanging is allowed. In fact, nine countries, they have hanging. Three countries, they have lethal injection. And then in eight countries, shooting. They shoot a person to death if you're a convicted person. In fact, three nations, even if you're not convicted, if they just want to, they will shoot you to death. Now, during that time, Christians can be burned to death and rot in jail. And that's why the author of the book of Hebrews, he wasn't writing to a a coffee community. <laughs> he was writing to a people who were living in fear and they were living separated from fellowship and they were living in isolation. The question I want to ask is this. Why is it essential for the church, despite of the threats, despite of the inconveniences, despite of our preferences, why is it essential for the church to gather together despite of the different reasons and excuses that we have? Pastor, can't we just make it optional? And for some of you, you might have grown up in isip ninyo, what really is the church? Is it really a necessity? Is it really necessary? 
Thankfully, what we're going to hear today is not my words, but it's the Word of God. Because if it's just my words, it can actually be manipulation. And you would say, Pastor, sinasabi mo yun because you're our pastor. But thankfully, the Word of God is really clear. And from the passage that we've read earlier, the author was saying that therefore, in verse 19, he was saying therefore. Now, in, in the previous uh, chapters, the author was, was highlighting who Jesus is, that Jesus is greater than Moses, that the sacrifice of Jesus is more than enough for actually for us to be in a relationship with God, our Father, that we are now reconciled with God and we don't need any mediator. Therefore, now that Jesus Christ has, was crucified on the cross and has given His life for each one of us, now we have access to God. That we are no longer bound by these ritualistic routines and religious stuff for us to get to God that we may do certain forms of religiosity, but what the author is saying is this, you now have access to God because of what Jesus has done. In fact, in verse 19, it says here, therefore, brothers, since we have confidence, everyone say confidence. Confidence, confidence to enter the holy places by the blood of Jesus, in short, the sacrifice of Jesus is what gave us this boldness this confidence, this access to God. So you see, when you go to God, you don't need to, alam mo para bang, Lord, uh, can I pray? Can I ask for something? But just like any close relationship, you have this confidence that if you ask something, you're going to receive it. And the, and the context of this is that the Jews, these Israelites, they have this religious mindset that for them to be accepted by God, they have to course through the priest. You see, there was this um, religious act that was taught in the Old Testament, and during the time of Jesus, and even the early church, it was practiced, and the Jews have embraced it. Now, we're in, if you have seen, what you need to do is that you need to offer a sacrifice, bring it to the priest, and then the priest would somehow cut it, and then blood will flow, and then it will be set on fire, and then that was atonement. Now, once a year, there was, there's what they call the Day of Atonement, wherein the chief high priest would represent the whole assembly of people, and what the chief high priest would do is to prepare himself the whole year to be holy, to be blameless. Because the moment that he would enter the Holy of Holies, yung temple, there's the Holy of Holies, and then this is where the priests would gather, and then this, this is where the Jews would gather, and the outer court, this is where the Gentiles is able to worship. So once a year, this is where the presence of God resides, and the chief high priest would actually enter. And what separates there is this huge curtain. And so once a year, the chief high priest would prepare himself and if he would enter there with sin in his heart, guess what? He would automatically die. That's why as he enters, meron pong taling nakatali sa paa niya. And there's a bell. Because if the bell stops ringing, it's short, that person, that high priest has died. And so that was actually the practice and the Jews were just continually just thinking, you know, we're just going to do the same thing over and over again. But the author is saying here, no more of that. Because the curtain, remember when Jesus Christ was crucified on the cross and he resurrected? Guess what? The curtain was torn into two. Not from down to up, but from up to down. Only God can actually do that. If, there, if you see here, there's a curtain here. There's no way that I can tear it from up, down. I could tear it from down, up. But God tore the veil, this curtain, from up, down, saying that because of what Jesus has done, we now have this access to God. Therefore, we can come to God boldly and with confidence in our hearts. Isn't it amazing? Amazing. 
And, and, and the Bible just mentions here that the, the, the veil was torn. That is through his flesh. And so the author was giving this metaphor that the body of Christ that was broken, it was the very reason why we can have this access to God. And because of Christ's sacrifice on the cross, we now have access to God and we now have confidence to enter into God's presence. That is probably, if there's one thing that I want all of you to understand, I do hope and pray that you would understand the concept of being bold and being confident in entering into God's presence. Ibig sabihin po nito, it's not just Pastor Jopet who is close to God. Ibig sabihin po nito, yung taong katabi mo is also close to God or can be close to God. But not just that, everyone listen up. Nearness to God is a gift that was given to us with the Lord Jesus Christ. But to be intimate with God is a choice. Nearness to God is a gift. Intimacy with Him is a choice. That's why now that we have this access to God, we can actually enjoy an intimate relationship with Him. We can have confidence because we enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus What Jesus did for us cleansed us, forgave us, redeemed us, and we have been set apart by God for His glory and for His purpose. Before, we were enemies of God, but now we have become children of God. And if we are children of God, what does that make of us? We're actually brothers and sisters in the Lord. Look at the person beside you. Tell that person, Hi, kapatid. We are brothers and sisters in the Lord. So when we talk about what is the church, the church is a gathering of God's redeemed. Because all of us, we, were un- we are unworthy. If mayabang ka, guess what? Mahal ka ni Jesus. In short, if you're still... If you're still sinning and you're struggling with sin today, you're struggling with anger, you're struggling with pride, you're struggling with lust, you're struggling with all these sins, guess what? Redemption is available in Jesus. And the reason why we are a church because we're a gathering not of perfect people, but we are a gathering of God's redeemed. I want to say this. In view of what Jesus did, for us, the Bible says, let us draw near to God with confidence. Now that we have access with, now we have access to God, and in view of what Jesus did, let us draw near to God in confidence. You see, these persecuted Christians that the author was writing to, they had so many questions. Lord, we thought that you love us. We thought that we will be blessed. And they had questions about why, why they're losing their, their, their businesses, their economy, they're losing their lives, they're losing their family relationships. And they were just struggling, Lord, why is it that the very moment we became Christ followers, all of the things that we were trying to hold, we're starting to lose this. But more than just experiencing the worst of times, they realized that part of life is to struggle and to go through difficulties, but what gave them joy and comfort is this, that they can draw near to God. And I feel like there are some of us today where your faith is kind of being shaken and swaving just because of these waves and these storms that's happening in our lives. And there are many times that tinatanong natin, Lord, why are these things happening to me? Why of all people sa akin pa? But bakit hindi nila sa katabi ko? And yet, we ask these difficult questions. And sometimes we're waiting for God to answer us. And yet, what God tells us is this, draw near to me. Because in my presence, you will experience fullness of joy. 
in my presence, you will experience this peace that surpasses all understanding. That in my presence, you will experience love that's everlasting. That in my presence, you will experience forgiveness of sins. Therefore, in me, there is now no condemnation. And many times we ask questions, and I want to let every one of us know today. Please bring all your questions to God. But make sure that you're also ready for His answers. And the good news is that we can draw near to God. Last October, when we were in our Go conference in Cape Town, I hope next time you will be able to join. We've met certain pastors there. We're in, if, as I listen to them, alam mo feeling na, Lord, Christian ba talaga ako? <laughs> Lord, am I really faithful? Because these pastors, every single day of their life, it's as if they're declaring to the Lord every single day of their life, for me to live is Christ, and for me to, and to die is gain. For most of us, we get to only quote that, kung nasa kabaong na tayo, right? And then nakalagay doon sa tarp natin na may angel, may, may heaven, heaven, may dove, nakalagay doon RIP, or nakalagay doon for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. But these pastors, together with their families, every single day of their life, is as if they're saying, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. That there are times that even this pastor, who is a husband and also a father, that they would tell their children, my son, if you don't ever see me again, it is because I have obeyed the Lord in my life. And for these children who would ask and struggle with the, the same question, Lord, if you're a good God, why would you let my father put his life at rest? But eventually, as they have seen the faithfulness of their parents, these children would in the same way respond in faithfulness to the Lord. Because we are not created to live forever in this world because everything in this world is temporary, but life in Christ is everlasting. And God has placed eternity in our hearts. That's why I would want to exhort to everyone today, live your life for God's eternal purposes, not for the temporary ones in this world. Verse 23, the author writes, Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promises is faithful. The author is there, it was instructing the people, the believers during this time, it's the world and the circumstances that we're going through, it's going to shake you. Question, who among you here, you exactly know what's going to happen tomorrow? And you are confident that you're going to make it through. These believers, every single day of their life, they're not just thinking about, Lord, what will we eat? But they're asking the question, will we live? <laughs> and so the author was saying, hold fast to your confession of hope without wavering because he is faithful. So, he's, so the author was saying, our God is faithful. Jesus is faithful and you can trust in him. You can cling to him. One of the things that me and Audi have learned in our marriage is that cherish moments but cling to what's eternal. There are times that you're going to move, you're going to transition, um, but we realize that the, all the things that we have are, are moments and momentary. So what we do, we cherish, we enjoy everything that we have, but we cling to what's eternal. Does that make sense? Now, God doesn't need perfect faith. He just needs... He just needs whatever faith that we have and give it to Him and allow Him to grow and refine it. I love this quote by Charles Spurgeon. And this is what he says. That exhortation, let us hold fast, might well be written on the cover of every Christian's Bible. We live in such a changeful age that we, we need all to be exhorted to be rooted and grounded, confirmed and established in the truth. You see, church, listen, anyone, all of us understand this. 
It's not the intensity or the strength of our faith that saves us, but it is the object of our faith. For example, Im- imagine you're falling in a cliff. You know the story of this um, one per- or three uh, people that they were challenged, sige nga, um, jump into the cliff, and when you mention the name of your God, check natin who will save you. Okay? So there was a Christian, there was a Muslim, and there was a Buddhist. And guys, joke lang to ha, wag yung totohanin. Okay. Baka isipin yung totoo to, this is just a joke, disclaimer lang. Baka si isipin yung, ah. So ilatag ko lang joke to. Okay? So pwede kang tumawa, pwede rin hindi. Okay lang? Sige. So nauna po yung Muslim. And so the Muslim, they were in the cliff, and then he said, my God is alive and He is real. Tumalon siya, pagtalon niya, ala la 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 And so, the two of them thinking and sila, ha, not real. Ang Buddhist, jump off the cliff, tumalon, Buddha, 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 Bumalik. Sabi ng Christian, oh. Tumalon yung Christian. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Buda, 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 buda. <laughs> Joke lang po yan. <laughs> but here's my point. The object of our faith is very important. Now imagine falling into the cliff. Is that about the strength of your faith na I'm going to be safe. I'm going to fly. I'm going to fly. I'm going to fly. But the mo- imagine the moment you fall and there's a branch that you're able to hold on to. It's not about how the strength of you believing. It's about the object that you're holding on to. And the author is saying here that let us hold fast to the hope of our confession because he is faithful. That's why it is essential that we hold fast to who Jesus is. Here's my question. If things are falling apart in your life, are you holding on to Jesus? Or are you holding on to the words of men? I do hope and pray that we would hold on to Jesus because He is faithful. Tell the person beside you, Jesus is faithful. Now, our last two verses, verses 24 and 25. It says here, And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works. Verse 25, Not neglecting to meet together. Everyone say, meet together. Meet together. That's why when we, meet, when we show up and meet, toge- meet together, we always eat meat. Okay? That's biblical. Joke lang po yun, okay? <laughs> Not neglecting to meet together as the, uh, is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. Here's the truth. One day, Jesus will return. Do we know when? We don't know. No one knows the time. No one knows the hour. But we are instructed to keep on meeting together so that our faith will be strengthened and so that we will be prepared when Christ comes, and when Jesus comes, guess what? He would see a church that is pure, holy, ready as a bride for our bridegroom to arrive. But have you noticed that in this passage alone, we have read three let us. In short, let us. Not let you, let me, but let us. Look at the person beside you. Tell the person, let us. Okay? Okay. Let us. And in these three let us, the first let us is this. Let us draw near to God with full confidence. In short, we are to enter into this place of intimacy with God. In short, disciples, followers of the Lord Jesus Christ, pursue intimacy with God. Don't settle with breadcrumbs when you get to actually experience this fresh, hot bread every day. If you are simply settling with breadcrumbs, it's no wonder that you easily fall and stumble when trials come in your life. Secondly, let us hold fast. 
What it means is that we are to trust in who God is because He is trustworthy, He is good, and He is faithful. But the third thing that, that the author was saying was this. Let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works. Do not neglect meeting together. And what the author is simply implying is this. Build your life with God's family and make it a priority. Okay? Build your life with God's family and make it a priority. You see, the author writes this, that in response to the cross of Jesus, let us stir, spur, let's provoke one another to love and to do good works. You see, the word love here is agape. Everyone say agape. And agape is actually unconditional love. And what's expected of us is what? To spur one another, to provoke one another, to push, to convince, to persuade the person to love unconditionally. To love without conditions. Do you know what the problem is? We prefer loving conditionally. We prefer to only love those who are lovable. We prefer being kind to those who are kind to us. And this is what's ironic. We want people to treat us with such kindness, with such respect, with such love. Yet, when it's demanded and asked of us to love people in the same way that Jesus loves them, we would simply say that, but Lord, it's something that I need to work in my life. I'm going to wait until I die before I love them. And the problem with that is that we always use ourselves, our standards, our emotions as the measuring stick. I will only love when it's convenient for me, but when it's difficult, that's not for me. But the call of God is for us to reflect and to represent His love to the world. That's why the Bible says, that the world will know that you are my followers, that you are my people by your love. Now, everyone, listen, look, look up here. The Bible says, love your enemies, right? Is it easy or not? Not easy. It's difficult. Did you know that we were enemies of God? Yet, God demonstrated this agape love that while we're still sinners, while we were enemies, Christ died for our sins. So everyone look up here. We all want to receive this radical, unconditional love of Jesus. But do you know what's expected of us? The same radical, unconditional love of Jesus. Do you know what makes Christianity so radical? It is when we actually love those who have hurt us when we actually love the very people who betrayed us and the very people that we don't like. Take it in. Take it all in. You have received this radical, unconditional, agape love of Jesus. In the same way, that is the measure, the standard that is expected of us. But do you know the good news? The good news is we don't have to work hard. My Lord, I'm just going to try anyway. But we only have to submit and surrender this hate this unlovingness in us and allow the Spirit of God to produce that fruit of love in our hearts. And mind you, everyone, it is possible to love. Tell the person beside you, love you. And do you know, do you know why we need church community? Everyone look up here. Do you know why we need church community? Because it is the place where we'll find people who are concerned with our walk with Jesus and how we live our lives. 
That's why may mga tao nagsabi sa atin, okay ka lang. But parang medyo may hugot ko sa puso mo. Why is it that there's so much pride in your heart? One of the greatest benefits of journeying together with the church community, the truth is we all have friends outside of church. And in reality, minsan mas masaya silang kasama. Ito sa totoo lang po. Because sometimes we can be, ano ba yan? Nanonood ka ng sini? You listen to rock and roll songs? What? Napaka-ungodly? But listen to me. There are different things that we believe in, but one of the greatest benefits of journeying with the church community is this. We will know God's will, and we get to obey God's will because there are people who are concerned with our walk in Jesus. In fact, I want to say this. If you're a husband in this church, please don't be offended when another husband will actually ask you, are you loving your wife? And if you're a wife, in this church, please don't be offended when another wife would actually check on you and ask you, are you submitting to your husband? Or if another parent would check on a parent and say, you know, the Bible says, children, honor your parents in the Lord for this is right. But the same Bible also tells us, fathers, do not exasperate or provoke your children. And there are so many things that the Bible talks about, but the reason why it's very greatly beneficial for us is not because we're pushing our preferences in your throat. But it's simply because the Word of God is so rich and this contains the will of God and we want you to live your life in accordance to God's will. And I want to say this, for some of you, you might feel like you're being projected. Parang, parang pinaproject ako nitong taong to. It might feel like that way. But it's not actually that. The goal is to journey with you towards Christ-likeness until Christ is formed in us. Until you become the most Christ-like husband. Hello? Until you become the most Christ-like wife. Until you become the most Christ-like parent. Until you become the most Christ-like, whole, satisfied, and fulfilled single person. Hello? That's why we journey with people. That's why we gather together. We assemble together because there's great benefit in journeying with one another. So in view of what Jesus did for us on the cross, church, I want to say this. Let us pursue the community of God's people. Let us pursue growing together with other believers. I love this quote by John Robinson. He's a New Testament scholar. He says this. Can we all read together? Go. Love needs stimulation and society. Faith and hope can be practiced by a solitary in a hermit's cell or on a desert island. But the exercise of love is possible only in a community. Do you want to grow? Do you want to become a, a loving person? Do you want to become a loving person? Stick with me. <laughs> Macha challenge po yung pagiging loving nyo. Or not just that, try to journey with someone else with all his flaws, with all that person's baggages. You will, your love and your capacity to love will be challenged. How many here you're happily married? Oh, sige, yung married na lang. Uh-huh. Okay, okay. Mas marami, mas marami. <laughs> Remember when you were trying to pursue one another? And you're like, oh, we complete each other's sentences. Oh. <laughs> and you just can't stop looking at one another. And like, oh, I'm marrying the best person in my life. Then on the altar, you give your vows. I will forgive you. I will cook for you. We'll travel the, the world together. Oh, all this Amazing promises. Then day one, oh, God, amazing. Day two, oh, amazing. Day three, oh, amazing. Couple of days, couple of weeks, couple of months after, you start to see how imperfect, how flawed, how needy, and how broken 
the other person is. And you try to change this person, but you can't. That's why we have to understand that it's not our job to change the person, but we allow God to change us first. Because maybe what God is asking you to do is to trust His work. And then as He works out His love on the other person, God is also growing you to becoming a person of love. Sometimes we pray, Lord, saan maging loving yung asawa ko? Saan maging loving ang boss ko? Saan maging loving tong girlfriend ko? But how about God changing us to becoming more of a loving person that is a reflection of His love through us? That's why the exercise of love is possible only in a community. You never grow in love if you're alone. Sabihin mo, self-love, self-love. <laughs> I'm gonna love myself. You'll only grow in love when there are people to love. Are you ready to love the people around you? Are you ready to love the difficult people? Are you ready to love your enemies? Do you want to honor and glorify God? Love unconditionally. That's why forsaking fellowship is a sure way to give place for discouragement to grow in our hearts. This discouragement festers where God's people are not exhorting one another. That's why meeting together, we strengthen one another. We grow together. The problem is some only go to church if they feel they need it at the time, but our motivation for fellowship must be to obey God and to give to others. We can and should gather with believers to encourage someone who needs to, sh- to stand strong against a tide of discouragement. So everyone, we gather to receive something from God at the same time to give something to God. We gather to encourage one another and to strengthen the faith of each other. We gather to bless one another. For some of you are saying, Lord, the ng pera, what do I do with my money? Bless people. We gather together to give God our to give God our best worship together. We gather to give God our best. We gather to encourage one another and we gather to work together in the kingdom. So everyone, we gather together, not just because we feel like it. We gather to give to God and to give to each other. Every single Sunday, listen to me, there's only this one and a half hour every single week that we get together every Sunday. My prayer as a pastor is that please don't just leave immediately. I understand that your pastor is extrovert and I love the idea na, meet people! And as a stress kid, that's why napupuno po yung CR. No judgment there. But what I'm trying to say is this. We are a church family. And our prayer ni Odi is that we would grow in a loving relationship that actually reflects the love of Jesus. We might not like the same things. I like coffee, I like shoes, I like traveling. And you like your room. And you don't want to get out of it. And that's okay with us. But if there's something that's common with us, it's our shared faith. It's Jesus, our Lord. And what we don't want you to experience is this, to be separated and experience isolation. Because here's the reality. Everyone, look up here. I'm going to end in a while. If the enemy can isolate us, he can destroy our purpose. And he can weaken our faith. Isolation is never God's design for us. We are created for a community. We are designed for relationships. And I'm not just talking about love relationships here. We're talking about faith relationships. We need people who will strengthen our faith. We need people who would tell us, do not give up even when it's difficult. And there are moments that people will tell you, it's okay to give up. But allow God to pick you up again. And when your faith becomes weak, at least there are people who can pray for you and who can strengthen you. I want to show you this picture. 
is actually a, an animation that I saw in YouTube. And you see an anteater. Okay, an anteater. And there was this one small ant that he was lagging behind and the anteater started to suyupize it. What's the proper word? Suck, okay? Or vacuumize it now. Mas, good, mas okay yung suyupize, no? Mas may recall. Eh? And so imagine this anteater started to just really try to vacuum, suck this one ant. And so this one ant started to cry for help. Help! Help! I'm not sure if that's how ants call for help. Like, ding, 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 And so this ant is asking for help. And then if you go to the next slide, what happened was the other ants came to the rescue. They came together and they created this ant ball. <laughs> and because they were together, do you know what happened? None of them got harmed. And because they were together, they gathered together. Look at what happened. This little ant was saved and they were able to go against this challenge and this oppression. Why do we gather together? Because it has value. Why do we gather together? Because we want to obey God. Why do we gather together? Because it grows our desire for God. It grows our intimacy with God. It grows our faith in God. That's why we gather together. In this church, we don't just have Sunday services, but we also have one-on-one -on -one discipleships and victory groups. But the principle here is this. Do not isolate yourself, but choose to be connected with our church family, with our church community. And I want to make this as my one most important point. We are better to gather because we're better together. Okay? I'm not sure kung tama ang grammar ko, but pinilit ko lang. English majors, tama naman. Basta you get the point. We're better to gather because we're better together. Tell the person beside you we're better together. One last story and then we'll celebrate communion. There was this one missionary who went into the villages of Nepal. And in the mountain ranges, there are different villages where being a Christian, you can actually be thrown off the mountain. And so this missionary labored and did God's mission in the mountain ranges of Nepal. And then there was this one missionary who also visited. And then one evening, in one little hill in that mountain range, there was this one small church that can accommodate around 100 people. And so the missionary was waiting, the pastor was waiting, and then the missionary was, they were just waiting and they were praying and they were preparing. And then they started to see these little lights, little lights the slowly walking towards the church. And so the missionary who came to visit was just thinking, maybe these are like strong, muscular men who's braving the snow and the cold weather just to attend worship. And this missionary was just excited. I'm excited to meet this muscular, strong man. And, as this, and these little lights started to approach closer, he realized that these were old women carrying little children at their back. Walking 10 kilometers, braving the storm and the snow so that they could worship together. And the missionary was saying, that was the best moment of worship because everyone came not for convenience but everyone came for their Savior and they gathered together and they gathered together realizing that their husbands 
had died because they've been pushed off a mountain. And now they're struggling with the idea, Lord, how will we go on with life? But they're holding on to the hope. They're holding on to their Savior. And every single day, they would choose to say, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Everything you hear on earth is temporary. It can be painful, but it's, no, it's nothing compared to the eternal glory that awaits us in heaven. And in the time of worship, people were crying together. And people had nothing to give. They just had a guitar. They didn't have what we have, church. But they understand that the best instrument of worship is their heart. And so they gave God the very best of what they have. They offered to God their hearts. Sorry. There are times and there have been moments that maybe you've been hurt by someone in church. And I want to say this in behalf maybe it's a church leader or it may be your pastor or it could be me. I'm sorry for those people who have hurt you in church. And I want you to understand that in this church the measure of love is not the pastor's ability or capacity to love, the reason why we can love because we have experienced this radical, unconditional love of Jesus. And if you have been hurt, I pray that you would experience the love of Jesus today. That if there is a reason for you to keep on going and journeying in this church community is not because the people here are perfect, but it's because you have experienced this tangible love of God for us. You may still be hurting and there are still wounds in your heart, but I believe that God is able to heal all wounds and He can create in us a clean heart, a renewed heart, in a love that is made whole and cleansed by the love of Jesus. Church, please don't make people as the standard and the measuring stick because we will always fall short. I always fall short. But I pray that for each and every one of us to always look to Jesus, thank Him for His love for us, and say, Lord, thank you. That because I am flawed, I am unworthy, I am undeserving, yet you love me anyway. Let's just bow our heads in prayer. Lord, thank you. for your beautiful love. Thank you for this unconditional, radical love that you have poured out upon us. Lord, we were rebellious. We were sinners. Lord, we are selfish. We are self-centered. We are prideful. And Lord, ang daming issues sa puso namin. But may we respond today in love. May we respond today in worship. May we respond to your grace. And Holy Spirit, I pray for each one of us that Lord, we would experience your love in a very tangible way, in a very personal way. That we won't look to the left or to the right, but we will look at you, Lord, as your child. So, Lord, this morning as we stand in front of you, we'd like to say thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you that we can draw near into your presence. And may you place the desire in our hearts, Lord, to be intimate with you. Lord, that we would 
draw near to you and hold fast to our confession, God, because you are a faithful God. And Lord, we put our trust in you, but at the same time, Lord, even if you have been hurt by our church community, by a church leader, by our victor group leader, and we have experienced, Lord, this betrayal and this offense in our hearts, Lord, we choose to overlook this offense and we choose to look to you today. And as you have forgiven us, Lord, we choose to forgive those who have hurt us. Lord, we choose to love even the unlovable. We choose, Lord, to become your people who had been loved and who had been saved, who had been set apart. And so I pray today, Lord, fill our hearts with your love. Fill our hearts with your love. Can you put your right hand over your hearts today? Lord, you know what's in our hearts. It's struggling with with offense, with bitterness, with apathy. Wala kayong pakialam what's happening around us. Lord, I pray, Holy Spirit, I pray that you'd fill each heart with that everlasting love of the Father. Lord, melt any form of unforgiveness and hate. Lord, that you would melt away, God, all offenses, that you would melt away any source of any form of pride. And I pray, Lord, that we will respond in humility, in the same way that you have caused, that you have displayed humility to us. So Holy Spirit, I pray, let, your, let the love of God fill our hearts and overflow in our hearts. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, fill us with your love. Can we just do this? Just bow your heads in prayer. Close your eyes. And I want you to utter a word of prayer to the Lord. That if there's anything that God is pointing out into your heart, be humble and be courageous to release it to God and allow His love to overtake your hearts today. This is between you and God. Even if you've been offended, even if you've been oppressed, let the love of God fill your heart right now. Come on, go to God in prayer. Lord, as we have received your love. Lord, this is such amazing display of your grace. May we reflect and radiate your love right now, in this very moment. We let go of anything that is unacceptable to you. We let go of sin and Lord, may you fill us with your love, with your presence, with your joy and your peace. Lord, I speak peace to every heart right now. Thank you, Lord, for filling us up. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Can we all stand up, everyone? We'll be taking the time to worship the Lord. But I just want us to take this time also to worship through communion. Communion is remembering what Jesus Christ has done for us. Many times we forget how glorious that act of love that Jesus has displayed on the cross for us. But once a month, we take the time to say, Lord, we remember. And I want to encourage you every single day, 
breathe in the love of God so that you could breathe out His love as well. But let us be reminded today of how much He loves us. Are you convinced that you are loved by God? Can you tell the people around you, you are loved by Jesus? Come on, convince that person you are loved by Jesus. Tell the person beside you, you are loved and and forgiven. I want to read a couple of verses in 1 Corinthians. It says here, For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when He was betrayed took bread, and when He had given thanks, He broke it and said, This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's pray. Lord, because of what you have done on the cross, because of your sacrifice, we have been made whole. And so, Lord, these broken parts in our lives, in our hearts, wholeness, restoration is available in you. So, Lord, our prayer today, make us whole. Fill us up, God, and thank you for such powerful display of love on the cross. Lord, we honor you. Be glorified. The body of Christ broken for you. Thanks be to God. Let's all partake of the bread together. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let's pray. Lord, thank you. Because of the shedding of your blood, there is forgiveness of our sins. So I pray today that as we stand before you, may you cleanse us, God, of any sin. And if there are unrepented and unconfessed sins, Lord, we repent from it today. Remind us, God, that we now belong to you. We do not belong to the world. Our identity is in you. Therefore, we are forgiven and we are your children. Thank you, Lord, for the forgiveness and thank you, Lord, for the healing that's available in you. Lord, we pray, God, if there are some of us that needs healing, I pray that you bring healing upon our physical bodies, we pray. Even, God, to our mental health concerns and even our emotional struggles, our emotional pain, Lord, we speak healing right now in Jesus' name. Thank you for the shedding of your blood. The blood of Christ shed for you. Thanks be to God. Let's all partake of the cup. Church, are you grateful for what Christ has done for us? In response to His amazing love, His amazing grace to each one of us, can we just all declare and worship the Lord together with this song?
Lord, your grace, your love, your mercy is amazing and is overflowing. Just before I pray a prayer of blessing, there are some of you here today that the Lord just wants to comfort you. And the Lord just wants to tell you that He's giving you the grace to persevere. What you're going through is not easy, whether it's in a business, in your relationships, whether you're praying for salvation for a family member, whether you're praying for provision, the Lord just wants to remind you and comfort you today. He's giving you the grace to persevere. It's not going to be easy, but He's giving you the wisdom and the strength to go on. And even if there are times that you feel weak, the Lord wants to tell you, He is strong and He will be your strength. So trust in Him, rely on Him. Lord, thank you for the grace to persevere, to run to you, to experience you more and more in our lives. I pray, God, that you fill us with your love, your purpose, your grace. Can we all lift up our hands to the Lord? Jesus, you are king of our lives. You are sovereign forevermore. So, Lord, we pray, rule and reign in our hearts, in our minds, in our relationships, rule and reign. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you His shalom peace. Be blessed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you, everyone.